Hi everyone, this is Latangela Sherman of Max 94.1 and uh, she's here with us today at Swagger. Um, just starting out, uh, Latangela is a personality. How long have you been on the air now? I've been here for 12 years. 12, 12 years. years? You know what, it actually made 12 years April 18th. I started really? here a week before my 16th birthday. And um, I, I figured they would get tired of telling me no before I got tired of asking. So, whoop, there it is. Look, <laughs> and thank okay. you for having me today, too. And well, I just, I appreciate you doing this for me. Anytime. And so, can you tell us, like, how do you, because you said you started me with 16. That's right. not coming. Right. I started here with um, a teen talk show. Now, I went to Baton Rouge Megan High, Visual and Performing Arts, and there they had a radio, you know, program. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, let me go and sign up for the class. They told me no. Just cause, not with a just cause. The class wasn't full, cause you know I checked. Um, the, the professor, his son got in, and I couldn't get in. I was like, you know what, forget about it. I'm going to the real radio station. I was talking out of turn. I knew I was too young. I never even thought to come over and fill out an application. And I guess I wasn't speaking out of turn. It was just God telling me, well, you know what? When one door closes, just build you another pathway. Let's go. So they had a commercial come on and said that they were looking for a teen talk show host um, for Partners in Peace Teen Talk Show. And it's a show that was formed by Master P and No Limit at the time. And I came and I auditioned. They asked me to host the show. Later on, they asked me to produce the show. I fell in love with radio. And, you know, and I was really moved to do it because I wanted to, to be a part of something that was for teens, by teens. But it also gave the parents and an inside look at what's going on inside of our lines and open the dialogue because there's a breakdown of communication between generations and it's been there for a while. Yeah, there really is. Yeah. And so you progress from there and... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, I, and now I wash the dishes, I cut the grass. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned being a production manager. Now, what, what exactly is that? Well, we have four stations here with Citadel Broadcasting in Baton Rouge. We have WMX, KQXL. We also have our new station is Gen X WCDV, as well as 1460 WXOK. Um, and with that, I'm pretty much the liaison between the sales department and the program staff, meaning the sales reps, they go out and they sell air you know commercials to different clients and with that you know we have to assign each spot to be um, customized and the, the production director myself I have to assign accordingly what voice should go on which station what type of creativity should go behind it making sure that the dollars attached to those commercials don't miss and that everybody is taken care of and happy and everybody flourishes from there you know <laughs> okay so you do this a month as well as you're on the air every morning uh -huh, from 6 to 10 with Jay Tweezy um, and then also have the slumber party on Q106.5 overnight Okay, so with this normally, does that title, does it normally apply to a personality? Like, would, would most people be both working on the air as well as in that position? Or? Well, you'll find here that a lot of us, we do have dual and triple positions. Um, I guess it all depends on, on what you specialize in. You know, I'm, I'm a, a gadget geek. You know, I've been recording and in the studios working on albums since I was 13. So I've always been electronically inclined and want to know how to do this and how to do that. You know, so I've always been around things like this and, and intrigued with production. So it kind of fell in my lap. Our production director a few years ago, she just up and quit. You know, and so they called for me to come in and do it. And I've just been in the position ever since. And I'm proud to say that I am the youngest female and, you know, the youngest minority in our entire Citadel cluster to hold the position. You know, because with this, wait, let's see, not given my age, but I think I started when I was like 20, I want to say at least 20 Four as a production director here. You know, and at the time we had six stations, but Hurricane Gustav came through, knocked down a few of our towers, and now we're down to four. But, you know, it's been a blessing, and with that, you know, branched off into different things from all production company, imaging, and things of that nature. Just the voices in my head, they speak, they tell me to go, and I bounce, and I move. You know, so... <laughs> So, I mean, and you've already kind of said that it is kind of hard to balance this all out, but yet you're still able to do it. I mean, do you have any tips or pointers? Or, I mean, because, <clears throat> like we were discussing earlier, like, yeah. when do you sleep? And you asked me, what is sleep? <laughs> sleep? Who does that? What is, what is that? <laughs> but, I mean, like, what would be, like, the day-to-day -day for you? Like... Um, well, let's see. What is today? Today is Thursday. Okay. Um, I was here today at about, well... Let's just start Thursday at 12 o'clock. So, okay, so from that Wednesday night to about 3 o'clock this morning, I was in the studio. We're wrapping up my album. It's almost finished. Uh, we had the horn section come in last night, and I just finished, you know, a portion of that. I went to the house, pretty much took a nap, 
got up, did some writing on my book. It's almost finished, near completion, and um, I was here for 6 o'clock. So now I'm on the air, got off at 10, did a phone interview with Thais Mills. I'm hanging out with you, which is the highlight of my day. Um, and then I have a client that's coming in so we can do another production. So until about 2 o'clock, I'll be here. I have a few things that I'm putting together, some productions. So I have a couple of meetings to knock out with that, I'm trying to bring the Chippendales to town. And, um, <laughs> okay, I, I want to learn more about that when it came, when it came you know, off. I'll tell you all about it in a second. <laughs> um, so we have to do some confirmations on that. And then later on tonight, I'll be back to do my show. And, you know, I told you I went and got this punching bag, right? Get fine to die trying. Girl, I want to tell you, I hit that punching bag. I don't know if I hit it or it hit me. <laughs> but right now, that's what the routine will consist of. I go back and I spend some more quality time with my punching bag, going back to the studio. I'll, you know, probably get acquainted with my pillow, take a quick nap, reamp, and be back on the grind. But in between, I'm going to have to stop at my grandmother's house and see what she's up to. Because, you know, that's my mom. And I got to see my mom and my mom, my grandmother every day. Okay. And that kind of brings me to one of the questions that I have. Because a lot of times, you know, we're trying to balance everything out. Uh -huh. and, and especially in the entertainment industry, a lot of people feel like you can't have a career as well as a family. But, I mean, you did just say that you take the time to do this. So, right. It's not exactly balanced, but you you fit it in. I mean, it yeah. is possible to they be done. They understand my struggle, you know, and, and I'm not even going to call it a struggle because everything that I do, I sign up for it. You know, so people always say, you need to get some rest. You're too young. You're going to burn now. Well, if I don't do it now, when am I supposed to do it? And that's a good point. You know, so <laughs> I'm having fun right now. It's not a job that I don't enjoy, um, and I can't complain about it. Yeah, the hours are long, but I made them long because I want... I want somebody to feel as if they can have my position, but I want you to know you're going to have to outwork me to get it. And so now you said that you started when you were 16. Did you mm -hmm. like go to college though? Yeah, yeah. actually I graduated from Baton Rouge High a year early. I started doing correspondence in my junior year. So I did junior and senior year together. Um, from there I went to Southern, finished up at LSU, you know, and there it is. I fell into radio and made it a career. I love it. So when you were at Southern, what was your major then? That Marketing. Was Mark oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because I have my associates in marketing, so I'm like shocked. Because now I'm a mass comm major, so it's just kind of like, oh, good. Oh, okay. Make it happen. <laughs> well, um, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Wait, because we did not mention your album, and I didn't know anything <laughs> about it, and I, I want to know more. <laughs> I'm excited about it. Um, I'm the new spokesperson for Chevy. I um, won the new Chevy uh, Malibu for the Essence Fest. Um, in 2008. They said if you wait a few months, we'll get you to 2009. And since then, I've been moving around doing different events for them. And they want to, you know, take on some of the leg of the tour for me and make it happen. So we're almost finished. I'm with Rainmakers ENT. That's my um, company that partnered up to make some things happen for me. You know, and I did that with a very good friend um, who's been in the entertainment industry for a long time. And it was like, well, you're pretty consistent about this, aren't you? I was like, uh, yeah, so let's make some stuff happen. You know, and it's good to have people that you love and that love you and that, you know, you can trust in such, you know, this, I guess you could say, tainted industry yes. that's given me a creative right to do different things. So we're going to have a song that I just basically donated to Lifetime Network, and it's dealing with domestic violence. It's called Through the Eyes of Love. You know, I see things the way that I want them to be, but in reality, you know, you're bruising me. And this isn't what love is supposed to be. And I'll give you a copy of that before you leave so you can have it. Um, and we're also going to have different things on there, fun remakes. And I just teamed up with one of my favorites, Mystical. You know, we just um, did a song together. He's home now, and he's doing some positive things in the community. And, you know, I just wrapped up something for his project, and I'm excited about that. And some of the other people that I'm working with, you know, it's, it's nice. I hope you enjoy it. I can't wait to hear it. I'm just like, well, you just do so much. I, I even still, when I when I came in here, I knew you were a busy person, but I'm just like, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know. I think you got some extra hours somewhere that no one else has in their day or something. But I do appreciate you doing this so much. Anytime. And, um, I look forward to working with you again. Likewise. And and just thanks. <laughs> thank you. And just in case you haven't heard today, I think you're a freaking rock star. And if you don't remember anything else, remember the three R's in life. Respect for God, respect for self, and respect for others. You know, don't let your attitude take you somewhere, you know, that, that your heart really won't keep you. You know, it's just like my grandfather always used to tell me. He was a pastor for 23 years before he passed. 
And he would always say, you know, don't look down on people for the situations that they're in right now because it could be them today and you tomorrow. You know, in kindergarten, when they ask you to introduce yourself and ask you what you want to be, no one ever raises their hand and say, you know, I want to be a drug dealer or I want to be a dropout or I want to be a failure. You know, it, those aren't the things that come out of your mouth. People, they endure hardships and sometimes they just need a helping hand to help them bounce back or to get on the right path. And you don't know, um, you could possibly be that helping hand to steer them in the right direction. So if you can help someone along the way, get it done. And if not, don't look down on them. You know, try to point them in the right direction to where they can get assistance because God will hold you accountable for it. And that's a good point. Well, thank you again, LaTangela. <laughs> and uh, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you, Fancy. <laughs>